Well, as you know, I'm Scott King, and we're here filming on the exhibit hall floor of the big diabetes conference in St. Louis of the American Association of Diabetes Educators. And I'm joined in my booth by Clyde Shores, who has a product that I don't think anyone has seen except in the last couple of months when we introduced it in, in Chicago. Right. Tell us about it. Okay. Well, I'm from Deco Genetics, and Deco Genetics is an Icelandic company and a, a company focused on gene discovery and development of diagnostics and therapeutics. And our company found the TCF7L2 gene, which is most widely associated with type 2 diabetes. Okay. And so what we've done is we've introduced a test for those genetic variants, which would tell an individual that they have a higher risk, if they're pre-diabetic, of developing type 2 diabetes. So this is a test I could take to find out if I was predisposed to getting type 2 diabetes. Right. Correct. Or anybody in my family. That's right. Anybody, any individual, right, that thinks they have a risk of developing that. And a and it's a simple uh, reference laboratory test that's performed in our uh, genetic testing laboratory. And the sample collection is very simple. This is a buckle swab. And you simply, what we're doing is collecting saliva DNA in your cheek. And then once we had that, it'd be processed in our Chicago facility and then sent to Iceland for testing. Now, what do the results mean? Well, we've validated this genetic, these genetic markers in more than uh, 20 populations around the world and more than 35 publications showing that these variants confer risk for type 2 diabetes. But what was an even more important study was uh, this New England Journal publication uh, last year showed that we genotyped all the patients who were in the Diagnostic Prevention Program study. And what it showed was that those patients, about 10% of the pre-diabetic population, if they were positive for the test, they were twice as likely to go on to convert to type 2 diabetes. However, what was interesting in the study is that those patients who were positive that got put into the intensive lifestyle intervention program of diet and exercise, as well as drug, did better than those who weren't positive for the test. So the test can really help those people uh, hopefully prevent converting to type 2 diabetes. So Clyde, what I'm hearing is this is the first commercially available genetic test for type 2 diabetes. Correct. It's not, it's the first one, so it's it doesn't give you 100% certainty. Right. You said it's a 10%? About 10% uh, in the studies, about 10% of the pre-diabetics were positive for the, the test. Okay. In type 2 diabetics, the instance is about 20%. Okay. And that's where we actually think that there's going to be another indication for the test, uh, where in type 2 diabetics, it may help uh, determine how well a patient will respond to a diabetic drug. For example, at the ADA, a new publication came out from a group in the UK where they looked at 4,400 patients who were uh, and tested them for the marker, and those that were positive were twice as likely to not respond to sulfonylureas. And as you know, sulfonylureas are kind of the first drug of choice right. for either pre-diabetics or diabetics. So we are excited and think this test uh, can really help, hopefully, prevent diabetes, but also help predict uh, drug response in those it, who already And get someone it. onto the proper treatment. It, and re exactly. So you, you take some uh, cells and saliva from your cheek, right. you send it to Chicago, but do they pre-process it there? And then it goes to Iceland? Correct. So when Why it comes, uh, two different processes? Well, Chicago yeah. is our US-based uh, facility, and when the samples come in, we process those, we actually assign an, an ID, an encrypted confidential code, mm -hmm. to the patient's sample and then we send that on to ISIN and Deco Genetics has the largest genotyping facility in the world and so we prefer to have all the testing done there to ensure the quality I see. of the results and then the reports come back to Chicago. Now when you give the results there, there could be an emotional response. Right. Is there like do you need a counselor there or it, I, obviously it's not as serious as someone getting a HIV test right. where it's it's huge but this is still a, a big a big deal. Right. What we'd recommend is that that information be shared with the physician and that you talk to the physician about what your options are once you have. 
Now again, it's, it's a genetic test. It's not a guarantee that you're going to go on to develop type 2 diabetes, but at the same time, it shows that you would have a twofold risk doing that. And as we know from some of the studies, you know, the best options are diet, exercise, and drugs, if that's proper choice. Right. Also, we have a partner, DNA Direct, which uh, is a group that offers di uh, genetic testing online, and they have genetic counselors, and they can help individuals understand more about genetic testing, as well as uh, what options are available to those patients. Okay, so how do they get the test? How do they get the People test? People are watching. They can go to decodediagnostics.com. Okay. And all the information about the test and how to order is there, and then they can take that information to the physician and uh, recommend that they order the test. How much does it cost? It's $500. It's a once-in-a-lifetime test. And at the current time, we're working with uh, the government and with payers to try to get reimbursement for it. At this time, there's minimal reimbursement for the procedure, CPT codes, which is typical for a reference laboratory test. But uh, we feel confident, based on research we've done, that, that uh, we can eventually get full reimbursement for it. So for $500, someone will find out if they have a double the risk of average of getting type 2 diabetes or right. not? If they're, if they're pre-diabetic or a normal individual, correct. Mm -hmm. And then if they're type 2 diabetic, and they are positive for the test. This study if they're shows type two already diagnosed. They're already, uh, and they positive for the test. This study will demonstrated that they will probably not respond well to sulfonylureas if they're positive for this. That's right. And now we're why doing is that? studies. Why is that? Yeah. Well, because uh, of the gene, this is still being researched, but uh, scientists believe that TCF7L2 gene uh, has a lot to do with. Um, not only the development of type 2 diabetes, but also how the patients will respond to certain types of drugs. Mm -hmm. And this study just showed that they would not respond to that. The other thing that we've observed in the two studies is that patients who are positive for the test have all had lower insulin secretion. Mm -hmm. And that's what's given our scientists and physicians with whom we're working uh, the idea that if we correlate the testing to drug response, we may be able to predict which ones will work better and which ones won't. Wow. Yeah. Well, Clyde, I'm impressed. Um, Great. It sounds like this is the first of maybe more and more tests to come in the future that will be more and more predictive. We believe so. There's other genes that have been discovered that are associated with uh, type 2 diabetes, and we've looked at all those publications just came out recently at the ADA but none of them are more closely associated with type 2 diabetes than, than this gene, TCF702. But we're gonna to continue to look at those genes, and if we think they add value to the information, then we would include them as well. Yeah. Great, great. Okay. Well, Clyde, thanks for coming on the show. Okay, is, uh, thank you very much. You're doing some good work, and it's fascinating. Thanks a lot.